Sandra Day O'Connor became the first woman to serve on the United States Supreme Court after President Ronald Reagan nominated her in 1981. I pledge to appoint a woman who meets the very high standards that I demand of all court appointees. I have identified such a person. Sandra Day was born in El Paso, Texas, and grew up with her siblings on a cattle ranch in Arizona. We were away from everything. We had no neighbors close at hand, and there were my parents and the cowboys. She got her B.A. in economics from Stanford University in 1950 and continued her studies there to earn a law degree in 1952. After graduating from law school, she married John J. O'Connor III. Together, they had three sons, Scott, Brian, and Jay. After taking a brief hiatus from practicing law to start her family, Sandra Day O'Connor went on to be Assistant Attorney General of Arizona from 1965 to 1969, which ultimately helped her secure an appointment to a vacant seat in the Arizona State Senate. O'Connor went on to become the first woman in U.S. history to serve as Senate Majority Leader of a State Senate. Having women on the bench and in other positions of prominence is extremely important. After serving two terms, she left the Senate and was elected to Maricopa County Superior Court in 1974. From then on, O'Connor continued to rise through the ranks of Arizona's court system until her eventual Supreme Court nomination. While O'Connor was unanimously confirmed by the Senate, the weeks leading up to her confirmation were met with protests against her stance on social issues, particularly with regard to abortion. My own view in the area of abortion is that I am opposed to it as a matter of birth control or otherwise. Even though O'Connor is a Republican, her case-by-case -case approach to the Supreme Court placed her more in the center of the court's ideological spectrum. The proper role of the judiciary is one of interpreting and applying the law, not making it. She held key positions in landmark cases such as Bush v. Gore, Hamdi v. Rumsfeld, and Grutter v. Bollinger. O'Connor kept her seat on the Supreme Court even while battling breast cancer in 1988, and her cancer treatment was successful. The impact of the diagnosis of cancer that I received is, is one which has not been far from my thoughts at any time uh, during these six years. She retired from the Supreme Court in 2006 to be with her husband, who was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. I had been at the court 25 years, that's a long time, and my husband needed some help. So for me, that was an easy decision one that I do not regret. President George W. Bush nominated Samuel A. Alito Jr. as her replacement soon after. In 2009, President Barack Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In October 2018, O'Connor disclosed that she was in the early stages of dementia.